Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for July 12th, 2022, crown 1, 15 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for crazy weather up in the north. We have a potential tropical system developing in the Gulf of Mexico and a look at the ongoing tropical cyclone activity in the East Pacific Basin. So let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a weather across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, well, we noticed that at least for now, pretty much all is quiet with the exception of the Gulf of Mexico, where... There is a little bit of enhanced shower and thunderstorm activity today, and we are watching the potential for this to try to congeal into a tropical cyclone over the next couple of days as this kind of meanders around and generally heads off towards the north here. And then we have some waves out here in the main development region, and development at this time is not expected, but we will continue to monitor those as they progress westward over the tropical Atlantic. And in the East Pacific Basin, we have Hurricane Darby over here. This is a major Category 3 hurricane with sustained winds of about 125 miles per hour. It did rapidly intensify into a Category 4 yesterday and has now since weakened. We noticed that there is some dry air, especially on the western side of the circulation today. And that has led to occasional dry air entrainments and just overall the maximum potential intensity of the storm is beginning to decrease now if we look here from the current nhc forecast this is forecasted to move off towards the north and west here and then bend more towards the west as it passes south of hawaii as a post tropical cyclone so we are not expecting any significant development um, or any significant impacts to the island of hawaii um, other than maybe just some gusty winds and passing showers especially on the leeward side but other than that, we are not expecting any significant impacts to the island of Hawaii. And then out here in the further out into the East Pacific Basin, closer to land, we have a new tropical system that has a 70% chance of development over the next couple of days as this generally heads off towards the north and west. But this too, at least for the time being, shows no significant land concerns to portions of coastal Mexico, but we will continue to monitor those as well. Now, of course, in the Atlantic Basin, we do have this tropical system in the Gulf of Mexico that we have been watching for the past couple of days. Development chances have remained pretty stagnant at only 30% because we are very unsure about how this is going to play out. If we look at the visible satellite here, we notice that we have a couple of things going on today in the Gulf. First of all, we have this large area of shower and thunderstorm activity, but it's relatively disorganized and it may be concentrated around some mid-level spin in the atmosphere. But so far, there's really no reflection of this down at the surface. And for as long as that's the case, this is not necessarily something that has my full attention. Now, further towards the northeast of this larger complex, we also have a, an additional area of smaller complex of shower and thunderstorm activity. This has actually been able to generate a somewhat of a surface low slash area of low pressure. Not sure if it's fully closed at this point, but some recent radar observations do indicate that there is a low pressure system here. Now, whether or not this is, again, arguably could be at least chances be raised, I don't really know because this doesn't really seem to have that persistence factor. But either way, it is interesting, but this is generally heading inland over the next couple of hours. So the larger area of shower and thunderstorm activity, given enough time over water, could generate a surface low. If we look at the A50 millibar vorticity on the GFS forecast, this is the 12Z run valid for 8 a.m. this morning. We'll bump this out here in time. So at 2 p.m. here today, this is that surface low that we we're kind of talking about, this little area of energy in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet. So this is pretty close to being a what could be considered as a surface low. But this, again, just kind of moves inland and we don't really see any additional development. There is some energy that kind of spurts off here and moves into South Texas where it does produce some, again, maybe some disorganized convection, shower and thunderstorm activity, gusty winds. But overall, that's not really the main concern. If we look at the 200 millibar wind pattern, again, the overall upper level wind environment is not particularly favorable, but there is at least a pocket where favorable conditions could reside. Uh, if this has enough time over water and moves westward towards Texas, 
it could find itself under a little bit more favorable environment for at least a, a day and a half or so before environmental conditions become too hostile. And by Saturday, environmental conditions do not support tropical cyclone act development or activity. Now, looking at the relative humidity, again, this is just kind of a, a product here to see how much moisture is in the middle and lower part of the atmosphere. And what we notice again is that today, going through the next couple of days, we're going to have an interaction of a stalled uh, front boundary in here and this tropical moisture being pumped in. And that is going to create the potential for widespread heavy rainfall. And that rainfall on the GFS forecast could add up to be uh, really over about two to five inches in spots. You can kind of see here on the GFS forecast calling for isolated amounts closer to three to five inches across that corridor. And that's certainly possible. But again, the overall upper level environment is not particularly favorable. And the same with the GFS for, or the European forecast rather, the Euro is not particularly excited on this and shows no development really. Again, something to watch maybe as this tries to sneak in towards Texas. Again, upper level environment at this time would be at least marginally favorable before we kind of get another burst. Uh, kind of looks like another front comes in through here and just shuts everything down. And that might be the tail end or kind of a focus for another system to try to develop in the Gulf. Uh, but overall, we're just not really seeing much in the way of active favorability across the basin. And it looks like it's going to be shut down for the next couple of weeks. That's generally what we would expect as we progress into the month of July. Now, of course, by later July, things will probably change and we'll start to see a ramp up in activity. But as of right now, everything is pretty solid and shut. Now, focusing on the severe weather aspect of things, we have a couple of things going on today. First of all, up here across the Northeast, we do actually have the potential for severe weather. We have two severe thunderstorm warnings right now across portions of New York, and this is heading uh, towards the Albany area. So we'll have to kind of keep an eye on that. There's a slight risk for severe storms today, generally from northwestern Maine all the way down into portions of southeastern Kentucky and far northern portions of Tennessee and we have an enhanced risk for severe storms today including places like Washington, Lancaster, Philadelphia and Allentown, Pennsylvania closer to Harrisburg. Again so the main threats today not really looking at much of a tornado threat but there is at least some risk of tornadoes from Maine uh, through portions of Washington and New York but the main threat today is going to be that wind Again, wind uh, damage uh, within 30% probabilities within a 25 mile point uh, from the Washington up to New York corridor. So that's pretty substantial. And we also have a risk for severe storms out here across portions of Minnesota and Wisconsin and out here across portions of the uh, really across portions of Colorado, Wyoming and portions of Nebraska as well. So we'll be really kind of watching that. But overall, we're not really expecting a huge severe weather outbreak today, but that certainly could change. But look at the GFS forecast and we'll just kind of look at everything here. This is the 12Z run again. We can kind of see that within the next couple of hours, there is expected to be some gradual shower and thunderstorm uh, development that kind of comes through here. And maybe the potential for a line of storms to be coming through kind of the New York region. If we look at the latest uh, HRRR forecast again, kind of that line of shower and thunderstorm activity coming through probably sometime really uh, by zero Z. So this is about at 8 p.m. We kind of have a broken cluster of shower and thunderstorm activity. And that kind of extends all the way down here along the line, all the way into portions of Tennessee as well. So there definitely is the potential for uh, some severe weather with that. Again, mid-level instability values uh, will be quite high with instability values uh, over a thousand joules per kilogram across portions of the Northeast U.S., that's definitely going to allow for some potential thunderstorm development and the potential for some severe weather, along with decent SRH values over about 300 up in the mid-levels, accounting for the potential for some isolated rotating supercells. All right. So that being said, I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali, and I will be talking to you guys again some more tomorrow.